The Southern Nigeria Frontier, SNF, has stated that it would confront the coalition of northern groups if the government uh, fails to take urgent action towards calling the group and its members to order. It stated, that while, it stated this while reacting to a recent statement credited to the CNG where it called for the prescription of the pan-Yoruba social political organization, Afeniferi, and its declaration as a terrorist organization by the federal government. It said the statement by the CNG was not only a direct assault on the Yoruba people and the pedigree of Yoruba leaders, and warned that the CNG should not threaten the Yoruba or any region of the southern Nigeria, um, which, or with war, or any form of intimidation. Uh, well, joining us to discuss this is Samaila Musa. He is the Director of Strategy and Communications of CNG. And also joining us is Shola Ibisheni. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. So, Samaila, I'm going to start with you because you, you, um, your group is being um, fingered in this um, press release. Apparently, they are saying that the CNG uh, had insulted uh, the pedigree of Yoruba, the Yoruba um, nation and, of course, Yoruba people. What exactly did the CNG mean by that statement and asking the government to prescribe a fair? Well, okay. uh, let, me, let me just say that I'm only managing to hear you, if you heard me. If you are hearing me... I, I will come to you, Mr. Bisheni. I, I'm, I'm going to start with Samaila and then I'll come to you. Yes, is that what? I will come to you in a bit. Samala, okay. you can go ahead. Okay, uh, I think uh, first and foremost, we need to go to because the I really can, I really can get you correctly. Samala, go ahead. Uh, we need to go back to the genesis of the whole thing. You know, uh, I mean, uh, CNG did not just decide to issue a statement, you know, the word, uh, a particular uh, uh, statement you know, printed to the Afrodiferi that actually prompted uh, the to release that statement, you know, uh, because it was something, you know, it's one of the most sensitive, and I say most sensitive, not only in Nigeria, in, in Africa as a whole, one of the most sensitive uh, uh, area in our lives or in our endeavors, the issue of religion, you know, even the African traditionalist also doesn't want to say anything bad about beliefs, you know, whether God or whatever it is, or, you know, any of the deeds. So really, it, it's something that is inherent in us as Africans that we we, we, we are actually very religious uh, people. But, but of course, you know, uh, the way the, uh, the, the statement was released, I think the statement, I don't even want to go back into that, you know, it's about, you know, the prophets and, and all of that, and that became an issue, so many people started raising eyebrows, started, you know, uh, uh, talking about it that shouldn't have uh, uh, come up in the first place. That uh, why should Abedi very likely in Sunday go home uh, to the Prophet Muhammad? So, you know, it, it's something, it's an area really that, you know, over here in Africa, we really don't take lightly. And especially in Nigeria, I mean, Nigerians are known all over that we are very uh, religious uh, uh, set of people. So really, that's the genesis. Now, coming back to what you said about, you know, the, the, the statement released by CNG that it's now, you know, generated, uh, uh, you know, reactions from the group you mentioned. Uh, I, I want to say this, right? Even though I share a different uh, opinion on that, you know, because I also... Uh, uh, I know much about the Yoruba people I've lived in uh, the Southwest, and I know the kind of respect people have for the different uh, religion. You know, you can have a family where you have a Christian, a Muslim, and a traditionalist, and they all uh, live together in peace without having any issue. So really, I, I don't want us to uh, look at it like pushing them, uh, you know, out of context, really. And that, and that was my stand up in issue when this whole thing started. You know, that it, I think, because I also spoke with some of my friends, you know, uh, in the Southwest, who are also of the opinion that uh, Afeni Ferry did not mean it in a derogatory way, you know, and being that, as it, I mean, uh, that 
just their culture in, in, uh, in, in the Southwest, like uh, a, a Muslim can actually follow his Christian brother to the church for occasion, the same way uh, a Christian will follow his, uh, uh, you know, uh, Muslim uh, brother to the mosque. You know, so there's that, you know, uh, that relationship between them. And, that, and because of that, they feel there's no way up any ferry will have said that in a very derogatory way. And I, I, I want to believe so, because you see, Nigeria is actually at a, a precipice where any little push can actually, you know, push it over uh, the other side. And that's what we don't want to happen. Because the area of religion is one of the things that can actually be the, the most volatile thing in the northern Nigeria that can trigger off any kind of violence is actually the issue of religion. And that's why, you know, I always like people to just stay on their lane when talking about another person's religion because over here, that understanding is not really that much. Okay, I'm going to come back to you on the issue of, you know, the statement and what it depicts. But let me go to Mr. Bisheni. Mr. Bisheni, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you. But, Perfect. Uh, um, I'm not I just, sure we've got yeah, the if you can hear me, I'm just going to I'm going to push my question. If you can just listen, um, so Samila is saying that the reason why this conversation has even gotten to where it has gotten to is that the Afeni Fere had um, brought a religious um, perspective to the issue of politics or the issue of insecurity. Um, why did Afeni Fere decide to tow that line? Although he's also making the excuse that... Which, which, which line decides Well, the, the, the description or the comparison of Sunday Boho to the Prophet Muhammad. Sunday Boho, as far as I'm concerned, and Afeni Fere is concerned, are on the same page on the issue of the defense of interest of the young people. Initially, our position was that Nigeria could still be redeemed. And for that reason, we were calling for restructuring of the Nigerian state to revenge uh, the foundational federalism principles of which uh, the founding fathers of Nigeria fought. Now, it got to a stage where after the federal realized that uh, the call for restructuring is no longer fashionable. We do not need to come out to begin to say things differently from what we found out that the majority of universities are written for. I can tell you authoritatively that there is no organization no other organization is as protective of the interests of uh, Sunday Bohu than a periphery today. But that is much, that is just the much that one can say because of the sensitive nature of the issue for now. But I can tell you today that I've finally realized it, that Nigeria, I mean, majority of the Yoruba, overwhelming majority of the Yoruba, I on the same page with uh, I on the same page with uh, Igbo because um, I'm sorry, what? Mr. Bishani. What? When did you take that poll? Because I have interviewed many people who are from the Yoruba um, nation, and they have never um, supported the idea of Sunday Boho. Some of them have said that they do not agree with his style and the way he's going about things. But when you say majority, that means you have your statistics. Did you conduct a poll of sorts to find out that? Most Yoruba people are in support of Sunday Boho. I think we lost you, but I'm going to come back to you, um, Samila, because we almost are running out of time. Um, to douse this tension, because there seems to be a clash uh, of interest and, of course, um, words, sensitive words are being thrown around. Uh, and, and, and we are at a point in our country where everything is in a fragile state. Um, how do we douse this tension? Um, because I wanted to ask you earlier on, you are the head of communications, you are in charge of communications, and I'm guessing that when that first statement was released, you would have read it and vetted it, but then you're saying uh, in one breath that you do not um, somewhat agree, that you, have, you hold a different opinion as to what was being sent no, out I'm in a, that I'm, statement. I'm a director, I'm a director of strategy and program for the quality. 
right? Okay. So, yeah, you're of course. Uh, so, you know, there's a spokesperson who, actually, so, you know, took me from my own, but, you know, uh, I mean, rest of practice and planning. There's not, there's, I mean, programs, there's not anything going on there that my hand is not in it. So, I'm not, you know, I, 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 I absorb myself from that. But I'm just saying on a general note, I mean, my opinion might be different from what the group can call, you, you understand, you know. So, but what, what I'm saying in, in essence, I mean, back to your question, you know, I just try that, sorry for that digression, is that going forward, right, is that people can make a take, you understand. Yeah, and, and over time, CNG has come forward to even I mean, we've gone to even we've even gone to court and say, look, if the Igbos want to set seat, why not? You understand? And we have been calling for that. That the federal government is to look to that. They want to leave, leave. Let there be a referendum. You understand? If that's the opinion of the majority of the Igbo people, why not? If the Yorubas want to leave, call for a referendum. You understand? So there's a way to go about it, but not the valid way. We saw how Enabdi Kano went about killing people, killing innocent people. And ha, why you, I, I'm sorry, I I'm sorry, Samila, hold on. Where, where have you seen Namdi Kano killing people? I'm sorry. No, you see, the, this is the point. It, you, where you, like, if have I you seen, it, have you seen Namdi Kano hold kill on. anyone? Because you, you just said that on question. national TV. You asked me, you ask me a question, and I need to answer you, right? Yes, please. The, you, you asked, you, so the, the answer is this. Over time, we have so many audios where he's given order that they should kill. That even when they give an order for sit at home, that whoever goes out there, whatever happens to him, has his own parents. So really, you don't need to, nobody, you don't need to come out with arms. If I'm a politician and I give my followers instruction to go kill, and after they have maimed and killed people... But Nandi Kanu is not a politician, is he? I'm just giving you an example. He is a leader of IPO. And if you give iPod instruction, including ESN, give them instruction on what to do, when they carry it out, he needs to be responsible for it. That's the way it works. You don't go to the law court and say, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I gave order, but they are not little kids. They, they have the right to disobey my order. No, you're going down for it. That's the way it works. Okay. You, you understand? So you can't, you can't do, that's why we need to be careful about our utterances. Things that even, I mean, goes as far as taking human beings' life. So I many guess, police officers. I guess, I guess when you say we all have to be careful about our utterances, you mean the CNG of Fenifera, every single person, because everybody here, and because in you this need particular to be responsible matter, for whatever everybody uh, had said things that were too insensitive, and that's why we're here having this conversation. But unfortunately, time is not on our side, and I have to say thank you, Samaila Musa, for being here, and of course, uh, Sholai Bisheni, who we lost uh, because of bad connection. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We have to go now because uh, time is no longer on our side. I'm Mariana Kun. I'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. Have a good evening.